All right, we are back again for some spectroscopy practice, and I hope these problems can help make spectroscopy make a little bit more sense. A little bit scary, but we're just going to put our concepts in action. So our first problem is a, an EM wave has a frequency of 6 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Love it. What is the wavelength in meters? Okay, very exciting. And we're also given that the speed of light equals 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And what should ring some bells is we see the word frequency, we see the word wavelength, and we see speed of light. And this is just something that you need to memorize, but this equation is frequency equals speed of light over wavelength. And of course, all of these values are interchangeable, and what we need to find is the wavelength, and we're given frequency and the speed of light, because, you know, speed of light is always doing its thing. So this is literally a plug and chuck problem. And what we're going to do is that. So that's an 8, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second over 6 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And our meters per second values will cancel, and we're already going to get our meters unit that we need, which is helpful. So our 10 to the 8 cancels. You don't have to look at that. It's a little bit scary. And what we're left with is 3 over 6. We know that that is 1 half. So we get half a meter if our frequency is 6 times 10 to the 8, given that the speed of light is 3 times 10 to the 8. And there isn't really a context that we're looking for. It's not asking us to relate them at all. We're literally just plugging and chugging values into an equation. Our next problem is similar. So the wavelength of a pretty wave is 0.3 meters. What is the frequency of this wave in nanoseconds? And we know that frequency in our previous problem was meters per second. So when we do a problem, we need to look out for actually knowing that our unit will be in nanoseconds, not seconds. So same exact equation, and now everything is in the right place to start off with, which is nice. Let's work for us. Our wavelength is given as 0.3 meters, and speed of light is always the speed of light. Very helpful. So when we get 3 times 10 to the 8 over 0.3, we get a really big number, and it's 1 times 10 to the 9. But the number that we get is not in nanoseconds. It's in seconds because we had seconds in our original meters per second unit. So even though the meters cancel, we still have a value that is blank over seconds, the, the movement per second. So we have to get this, um, I'm just gonna put a squiggle seconds into nanoseconds. You're like, bro, I don't know that conversion, but you will now, okay. That was lame, but this is just something that you need to memorize that if you have 1 times 10 to the 9 seconds, that is 1 nanosecond. If we had it vice versa, then it would be vice versa. That wasn't very helpful, but it's just something that you need to know. You need to memorize this conversion, and it's very useful when you're doing problems like these because then you don't have to look it up and you don't have to pull out your notes or anything. So these two problems are very similar. We got three different values, solving for a value, using the same exact equation, plug and chug. And now these next problems are going to be a little bit more conceptual, so stay with me. Lots of writing. Number three. I'm just going to read. Um, UV slash visible spectroscopy probes the transitions between electronic states of a molecule. And NMR spectroscopy uses radio waves. We knew that already. 
But what the question is asking is that there are different types of spectroscopy. There's NMR, there's IR, there's UV vis. But right now, at least in my class, we're learning about NMR resonance spectroscopy. So it's asking what photons, the light that we shoot, have the lowest energy out of the three different kinds of spectroscopy. And our options are infrared, UV vis, or what we're using, radio waves with NMR. And this is just knowing the electromagnetic spectrum. So I can draw it out, make it all pretty for us, but this will also help connect the idea of wavelength and frequency. So when we talk about the electromagnetic spectrum, wavelength goes in one direction and frequency goes in the other direction. It really doesn't matter which one you draw as long as you make sure that everything is matched up. So we know that frequency and wavelength are inversely related. Love that. The equation shows that. And then these different kinds of radiation also are a part of this relationship. So the highest frequency photon are gamma rays. Next are x-rays. That's why when you're at the dentist and they x-ray your mouth, you have to wear this really heavy vest. It's because they're trying to protect you from radiation, so kind of them. And then we have UV and our visible light. Visible is what we can see. Infrared is a little bit past that. And then we have micro, which is why when microwaves came out, people thought that they would give us cancer. Maybe they do, maybe they don't. And then we have radio waves at the end. So as our frequency increases, we also know that energy increases. We just know that frequency and energy are directly proportional, while frequency and wavelength are indirectly proportional. So if we want to know what has the lowest energy, then we need to know what has the lowest frequency. And we can see after I said that, it's kind of obvious, but our frequency is lowest at radio waves and highest at gamma wave, gamma waves. So if I wanted to ask you, are microwaves microwaves or infrared photons which one is has higher energy you would say duh sophia the infrared has higher energy because it has a higher frequency and a shorter wavelength and being able to talk in that kind of language will make these problems a lot smoother because you already know the order of the photons you already know what they do and you know how dangerous they are so that can just kind of stick out to you and we're gonna go on to our next question. So there are three different kinds of UV light and the sun only blocks certain kinds, but there's UVA, UVB, and UVC. That comes from the sun. And the sun normally blocks UVA and UVB, that's our sun. She's so pretty. And then UVC is used for sterilization. Normally, if you look at leaning products, it's written on there something like UV, UVC is used for this bacteria, whatever. And these different kinds of UV radiation are classified by how strong their photons are. And in the problem, we're given that UVA has the lowest energy, UVC has the highest energy. So by default, we assume that UVB is somewhere in the middle, getting left out. Okay, and then it wants you to know which one of them has the longest wavelengths. So which has longest wavelengths? So we're going to make the same kind of cute little chart that we did in the previous problem, but just related to UVA, UVB, UVC. So here is another cute little graph. We're going to put wavelength here, frequency here, and then we can just put energy around the bottom because we know that they're directly proportional. We know that frequency, wavelength, they have arrows going in opposite directions because they are indirectly proportional. And if you spoke ahead of me, if you already know what I was talking about, you're like, if you already said that, that's good. That means you're learning. So I so said that UVA has the lowest energy. So UVA is going to be way over here. UVB is in the middle. And UVC has the highest energy. So it's going to be on this end. 
And after doing our last problem, it kind of gives away this problem. But setting up it like this, setting it up like this, can help you get on the right track because then everything is visually in front of you. You're not missing anything. You know that your proportions are right. I remember drawing this out like three or four times being like, bro, it's not that easy. But it really is. If you know your relationships, then you're set. So which one of them has the longest wavelengths? And we know that UVC has the highest energy, which means that it will have shorter wavelengths. We know that UVA has lower energy, so it'll have longer wavelengths. And you can say it vice versa, including frequency. So if UVA has shorter frequency, it'll have longer wavelengths. And if UVC has higher frequency, it'll have shorter wavelengths. So the answer to our problem is that UVA rays have the longest wavelengths. And that's that. Oops. Sorry. So now we are going to go to number five. A, oops, sorry, a radio frequency EM wave has a frequency of 3 times 10 to the 8 per second. And we want to know how many megahertz is that and you're like wait we're now now we're focusing on units that is true we're worried about conversions so our frequency is given in per second but we want to figure out what that is in megahertz so something that we just need to know a little bit of thing about conversions is that if frequency is some value over a second, it doesn't really matter what that is. You can also write it as s to the negative one because that's what we care about, the second. Then this second value, one, one over s, is the same thing as hertz because of God. So three times 10 to the eight over second will be the same thing as three times 10 to the eight in hertz. And now we have to get from hertz to megahertz and you're like i don't know that conversion well that's important so the prefix mega is 10 to the 6 so if we have a value that is 3 times 10 to the 8 in hertz 3 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 yes i can count okay so if we have something that's 3 times the 8 in hertz and we know that mega is in 10 to the 6, then that means that we just need to take away two zeros, and then that is going to be our megahertz value. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Mm, yeah, I can count. So this problem, we're literally just converting the problem. And I did it wrong, but that's fine. Sorry, excuse me. Instead of taking away two zeros, we only have two zeros. That's what I meant to say. So we have three times 10 to the eight hertz, and this has eight, this has six. So that means that if we do eight minus six, we get two zeros at the end. And you can do this for other problems. So if I had something that was three times 10 to the nine, and I wanted to get to a 10 to the six value, I would do nine minus six, and know that I need two zeros in my final product. And that's just the rule of exponents. So sorry that I drew the wrong number at first, but I hope that that made sense. And our last problem is that the um, chemical shift, I don't feel like writing that out, of CHCl3 is 7.3 ppm, parts per million. How many hertz away from TMS touch a little side whatever is the signal when recorded on a 400 megahertz instrument 
And this is another thing that you just really need to know the equation. So chemical shift is the idea that the induced magnetic field given by electrons in any molecule are affected by the external magnetic field in a spectrometer. So that's not important. But that's just what chemical shifting is, and this is what the equation is for it. Frequency in hertz from TMS over the instrument in megahertz. And we know that we need to find the frequency in hertz away from TMS. We're given that this is 400 megahertz and that our PPM value is 7.3. So when we do our cute little thing, we need to have our question mark on this side. You can multiply 400 on both sides to get the question mark by itself. So we ended up multiplying 400 megahertz times 7.3 ppm. And also know that we already know that megahertz is 10 to the 6 because we did that in the last problem and silly me wrote the wrong thing. But we also know that ppm is 10 to the 6. So when we multiply these, the mega goes away, like the idea of the mega goes away, you can pretend that like cross out the M and LOL. So you get 400 times 7.3, our unit will be in hertz because that quote unquote mega part is crossed out and our answer will be 2920. Ta-da! So these are just some practice problems. I really hope that this was helpful and just comment if you have any questions.